Is there anything finer than having VU meters on a video cassette recorder? How cool is that? Hello and welcome to another Mr. Peter Byte video and this one's a little bit different insofar as and we have finally got around to looking at these uh, a Sony SLO 1700 um, bit of a different machine um, and um, I've actually got two of them um, I've been after one of these for absolutely ages and then two come along at once well not quite six months apart but still um, so the machine we're looking at today is a brand new um, old stock machine uh, still in its box um, and it's not the one you can see in front of you <laughs> it, it is actually in the box uh, the one on top uh, i bought quite recently on ebay and um, it does have numerous issues it looks as if it's very high hours um, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun just running through all the issues cleaning it up basically refurbishing it um, as, as far as sort of the electronics goes anyway. Uh, so uh, that's going to be in a future video. But uh, yeah, we're going to look at this uh, new old stock Slow 1700. So let's get this unboxed. Um, I actually bought this uh, back last October. So um, gosh, <laughs> it's sort of end of April now. So uh, there's the uh, operating instructions, still sealed, wow, still sealed. Um, and um, basically I bought it and one of the things I said I'd do is make a video on it and I just haven't had time. It's, it's just been so crazy. Um, so this is it. And this is the first time I've actually had it out of the box. So, it's a little bit of a, looks like a tape mark, some sticky tape screen. Um, this is from Europe, so it's got the European plug on it, but that's fine. So 120 to 240 volts, I believe. Um, exactly the same power supply. I think it's the same power supply as the C9, but I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll look at that. Um, so, there we go. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, I so love these machines. And there is, oh, unfortunately it's broken. Um, there is also this bit of Perspex. And uh, I'll explain what that's all about uh, as we go along. So uh, let's move the box out of the way and crack on. So here it is in all its beauty and uh, yeah, it's really, it's just su in such great condition. Um, it's got one or two minor marks on it, but it honestly is, it's just like brand new. Um, so yeah, and the, the hours meter, I mean, it's not even on, on the gauge yet. Um, this is a 2000 hour uh, gauge. So uh, a bit about the machine. Um, it's um, not a consumer machine at all. It hasn't got a, a TV tuner in it. Um, has it got a clock? It's got timer functions, anything like that. Um, and as you can imagine from the, the SLO or the slow um, uh, model number, it is a professional machine, but it's not for use for broadcast side of things. This is actually a duplicator. And this would have been used in a massive bank of the same unit to um, create uh, tapes for uh, for sale, uh, commercial tapes, Betamax tapes. Um, now, obviously, it doesn't have a tuner in it. It doesn't have a clock. It doesn't have timer record. It it is purely a recording and playback machine um and and then some to be honest and uh in part i dedicate this video to um kevin f 
Uh, you know who you are. Um, the the guy with the C80, <laughs> um, who back last October said, oh, I wish there was a machine that recorded linear stereo and hi-fi stereo. This is the machine that does that. Um, I don't believe there's any other beta machine that does do that either. Um, so, yeah, really quite an amazing machine, especially for generating cassettes that will play back on any machine, any audio format, um, and um, linear stereo as well as the hi-fi stereo. So absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, you do have... Um, some extra bits and pieces. Obviously, the, the level meters are immediately apparent and they look fantastic. Um, when I've seen pictures of these machines, I've always thought they look, you know, almost like a professional field um, tape machine, audio tape machine, um, just scaled up into a video recorder. But uh, yeah, um, the, the, these look amazing. Um, now you've got various levels here. Uh, which you can set uh, sort of recording levels, um, beta, hi-fi, and the linear left and right. Um, we have actually got a phone uh, headphone output as well. You can monitor between um, beta noise reduction if you're so inclined. Um, but what's really amazing as well is you've got the RF um, monitoring capability of the video signal. So video beta hi-fi. Um, then you've got switch pulse side of it and ground, obviously. Um, beta hi fi, I think you've got to get 300 milliamps peak to peak. Might be wrong. Um, on playback of a hi fi tape um, to ensure that you're getting the, the best response, uh, the best recording um, possible of hi fi audio. Um, and there is actually a little door on the top which allows you to adjust that. So that's in there. You just see how new and nice that is. It's just so cool. Um, so yeah, um, other, th other features it has, let's turn this around a bit so we can have a look. Um, on the back, you have record remotes. Now, I believe these can be daisy chained um, with RCA phono type um, connections and basically if if either of these um have a short across them um then it will go automatically into record mode and like i say you can daisy chain those together and um you can have a whole bank of 10 or 20 or whatever machines and they'll all start recording at the same time um so yeah, which is what you want, because obviously if your master's starting, you want to start all of your slave duplicating machines at the same time. So that's really important. Um, then you've got your video line in, line out, um, and your audio. Uh, mode lock, not too sure what that is yet. Um, no doubt we'll find out in the fullness of time. Then we've got the beta hi-fi output specifically. Um, and you've got the RF, so beta, beta hi fi, um, monitor out, and the switch pulse. Um, and then we've got the remote um, socket, which is a, a DIN socket, um, which, uh, if you're familiar with it, basically it gives um, control, uh, video in out, and audio in out, all on one DIN connector. Um, wasn't that commonly used, but could be very, very useful, um, especially for editing. And um, some consoles, editing consoles, use that um, use that connector. So yeah, quite different. And of course, you've got a really good quality ground as well. Um, so you can actually properly earth it uh, to ensure you, you don't have noise. So uh, yeah, quite amazing. So I think the next thing is to actually power it on. And um, I don't want to unravel the, um, the taped up 
cable there. So I'm just going to do it like so. And then turn it on. Oh yeah, look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. So uh, let's eject. Now the deck itself is very familiar to anyone who knows about the Sony C9. Um, it is essentially a C9. Uh, the deck is actually a 711A. Um, so the B is the newer deck, like for the HF100. And this shares quite a bit with the HF100. Um, indeed, that the head drum itself is an HF100 drum. Um, you can see that it's barely got any wear on it. So it does have some wear, so it's obviously been used a bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, hardly at all. A um, little bit of dust in there as well. But, uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful. And, um, yeah, quite an amazing machine, to be fair. So uh, I suppose the next thing is, is to uh, take the top off and uh, let's have a look. Okay, so to take the top off, uh, one screw on the top. And you'll notice the screw is actually exactly the same as the screws used on the HF100. And there's one at the top left. And one at the top right so these were well and truly made to be easily serviced um, in situ on racks um, and uh, yeah it's great design really and you don't have to lift the flap either so uh, let's uh, try tape Let's put this on, eject. Now, these do have a feature that um, will probably uh, make the Sanyo fans, Sanyo Betamax fans, laugh. Um, so, just press play. And all good and you'll see high speed has just lit up here so if I press fast forward and that is now winding at super fast speed but it's unlaced so this machine doesn't as such have any trick modes, um, but uh, it does have like this fast wind rewind, which of course you'd want in, um, in a copying environment. So you can sort of quickly get the tape back. And indeed, if you record to the end of the cassette, it will do a fast rewind. Um, but it does need to know where it is on the tape. Um, it's sort of a little bit of a throwback to the C9 here. Uh, and so far as it works out how, how far it is through the cassette um, before it'll enable this fast wind. So if you try and do it too soon, um, too early on in the cassette, it won't actually let you fast rewind. Um, you have to do the, the standard rewind, which is with the the tape wrapped around the uh, the heads with it laced. So uh, let's go back a bit, and then we'll just see what happens when it gets to the near the end of the rewind. Nearly there. <laughs> you 
That's really weird. So it just laces the tape and then rewinds the last bit laced around the, the heads. Um, I find that quite quaint actually how it does this. Um, so you see standby is flashing. It should be able to press fast forward and we get a fast wind. Let's play. And there we have it. So picture-wise, it is absolutely fabulous. I mean, this is not a great tape, but my goodness, it's really doing such a great job. Um, just going for the tracking. So tracking furthest left. You see, it could do with a clean, to be honest. I've not actually given us a clean yet and furthest right so the tracking is a hundred percent spot on um i was a bit concerned when i first opened the the flap the um top loading system that it looked like there was actually quite a bit of wear on the drum it's not it's actually dust um the the tape has actually cleared away just the surface dust on the, the drum. So uh, I still haven't given this a tape path service yet, so I will, and uh, that will make a huge difference. So uh, yeah, what an amazing machine. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just a dream beater machine, really. <laughs> so uh, yeah really cool stuff so to um actually monitor the the level um by default it's actually off um but uh you've got like b hi-fi so you're just monitoring the hi-fi you can see it's actually fairly low there so with the meters um you saw me press the beta hi-fi and get like full travel that's not pressed. This is actually the analog um, linear stereo uh, playback level. So you can see just how much lower that is. I, I suspect this machine is actually, sorry, this tape is actually recorded on a HF 950. 950s are especially really poor at recording linear, linear audio. Um, and it's mono, of course. But uh, the um, beta hi-fi is really hot so they've obviously rammed up the uh the levels for that but uh yeah it's um it's quite cool and by default it does actually go to the the um linear audio because that was the common audio format of the time um so you'd want to get that right and then move on to getting the beta hi-fi correct but uh yeah quite interesting that Okay, so I've just put in the um, our favourite Brit Awards cassette, and uh, you can actually see here that the audio level is really high on this. Um, it's always pushing the the uh, level really high. Um, so that shows that's working, um, but you'll see. The high speed has now lit, so it's now ready for high speed. So I can now. And you'll see there's quite a flicker on the um, tape counter display as well, and that is actually um, correct. Um, the resolution is really, really high for the tape counter, um, but the refresh rate as a result makes it look as if it's like flickering. You can see it's sort of um, eight digits um, section just flicker
We don't appear to have any audio there. Maybe we don't. No, we don't. There's <laughs> barely any audio. Um, you can just see there's a little bit of movement. That's actually wound so quickly. Oh, it's gone most of the way through the cassette in just that short time. So, yeah, you can see it's, it's cleaned itself up nicely, actually. But like I say, I need to service the tape path. Um, so, yeah, let's wind it back a bit, get some music going. And you can see how fast that is actually rewinding. It's just what you want when you're duplicating, you want a fast rewind to get the next lot of cassettes in. And, uh, you know, if you're going through a bank of machines, then that's great, because by the time you've sort of got to the next one, it's already rewound. So, let's try it there. Yeah, so it's really hot audio on that. The level's right at the top end. Um... So, yeah, unfortunately I can't show the video because it's, uh, it's copyright banned worldwide. So, but yeah, it's, uh, that's really hot audio. So one thing I nearly forgot was, um, what this bit of plastic is all about. And it is broken, but I will fix it. It's, it's never going to be perfect, but, uh, you know, it's the joys of sending things through uh, five couriers. But basically, it would have looked like that. And this actually goes here. And this is like a tamper proof. So basically, um, you set it all up and then you put this on and it is to stop people sort of fiddling with them once it's set. So it's set and forget. And, uh, yeah, I just think that's really cool. And uh, so it would look like that. Set and forget. So, uh, yeah, you can get to the headphone socket. You can adjust the phone's level. But everything else is, is protected from any accidental adjustment. So, uh, yeah, quite a neat trick, that. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, it's really a very very wonderful machine um and um like i say i will just give it a bit of a service this is a minor clean really but it's an absolutely beautiful machine and um yeah i it does need to find a new home so it is up for sale um i do have another uh so there'll be another video on a, a slow 1700 which is one that's at the other end of the spectrum of of life um it's seen a heck of a lot of use um and uh, i dread to think what i'm going to find with it to be honest but uh it'll sort of highlight the issues to look at or for with these machines and uh yeah just what they like to work on when they they are older but uh i really hope you enjoyed this video and I'm, I'm just so chuffed to have had the chance to look at one of these machines and uh yeah i'm i'm really just so just really in awe of this machine it's it's the perfect beta in many ways especially in the modern age where you don't need clocks you don't need timers you don't need um all the bells and whistle whistles necessarily you just need a reliable beater this is your machine i mean it's built like a tank it is heavy um but uh, to have one in in such like as new condition is just wonderful so uh with that thank you very much for watching uh please like and subscribe um especially subscribe please <laughs> it would be really great i'm starting to get some good numbers now on the subscriptions and it was so nice to sort of get 
get those numbers up. Um, and please comment as well, because the comments do help um, sort of publicize the channel, get things uh, moving with it. Um, there's so much more I want to do that uh, I need the numbers up um, and uh, to sort of realize those dreams that I, I want to share with you, basically, on this journey. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much and see you in another video. Bye for now.